as you see on your screen, your dial, however you're joining us today. Little Hydra, little Hydra, Well Go USA release. Uh, oh, it's actually it's available now. Available now. I'd be slipping. I'd be slipping. Um, this is actually going to be a hard one to talk about, but I, I really enjoyed it. It's hard to talk about because one, uh, one of my favorite aspects of the film, it's an hour and 17 minutes long, and there is zero downtime. Zero. Every scene motivates the next scene. Every um, every character has a substance of some sort. There's nothing that's throwaway at all. Everyone, I, I don't want to go as far to say is intricate to the plot, but everyone definitely, um, if they're not there, there would be some, if they weren't there, there, there would be something missing. It's as simple as that. So what is Hydra? After retiring as an assassin, Ellis Cinema, so of course it's a foreign action film. You know, I, I didn't really, this this is not how it was supposed to be, <laughs> as far as like the uh, the content of what this, this show is all about, but it just so happens, I, I, uh, <laughs> I guess that's kind of like turning in my specialty, and I don't want it to be. I, I like to review all movies. That, you know, most of the time I like to do stuff that's off the beaten path. But uh, you know, I just I, it happens. The the ones that happen to be off the beaten path anymore seem to be foreign action films. So, and the reason why I say that is be, when you watch as many action films, foreign action films as I do, action films in general, um, I tend to be a little tough. And I don't mean to be. It's just like you know. For me, it's it's action overload at a certain point. Um, but this one, I was I was pleasantly surprised. You know, when I get these Wellgo uh, Wellgo USA releases to do coverage on, um, you know, it can go either way in terms of uh, how it's going to play out for me. Because as I've discussed on this show many many times before, I, I get kind of annoyed, um, not with Wellgo, but I get kind of annoyed with the lack of information um, on the, uh, the the pieces that I get. Um, sometimes it's a little hard. I mean, like, for instance, like, the person who did the music for this one, which is one of my favorite aspects of the film, um, you, it, it's, it's, it says music by Moku, M-O-K-U. You can't find any information about it, and I'm just kind of like, I... And, and, you know, it just makes it a little tough to do the show in, in terms of trying to be informative for you guys. But I, I digress. I'm, I'm getting off off track, as I always do. But um, for someone who watches a shit ton of foreign action films, this one was goddamn great. I mean, it, it it's nice when you don't see kind of a crazy samurai 400 versus one where it almost feels just kind of like a stunt reel like hey look at how good we are physically and and we know we know martial arts and we we have a camera so we're gonna market it as a film that you know i, I i'm too far gone i've watched that may work for somebody else you know and that's not to detract from um you know how hard it is to make a film because it is it is you know it's, i'm not shitting on, say, 400 versus 1 Crazy Samurai at all. Um, but I do think that if you took a little extra time in terms of sharpening the story, polishing the story, um, you know, you can get a goddamn good product like Hydra. You know, it is an hour and 17 minutes, you know. I feel like if this film was done in America, which for all I know it probably fucking will be, even though the premise is very... Um, the. Uh, very common, you know, you, you have a, I guess, retired or doesn't, doesn't do the game anymore hitman who gets kind of dragged back into it because of who he knows and, and yada, 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 uh, yada, yada, yada. I just see this being an American film that's like an hour and 50 minutes or hour and 40, hour and 50 minutes. Like, oh, we, we got to tell a little bit more of a story. And I, and you know, sometimes that's, that's definitely crucial for some of these foreign action films that I see. Um, sometimes I, I think we go a little too vague and, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, well, it's a movie, use your imagination. Well, sometimes you can go too far, you know, um, and sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's not enough and sometimes it's perfect, like Hydra. 
Um, the, the little bits and pieces of the story that come out along the way, everything starts to make sense, and it all, you know, weaves together uh, nicely at the end. A little bow for you. And um, just the pacing of this is not very easy to do a well-paced action film that isn't strictly action. You know, you, you watch something like, I, I feel like this is unfair to bring up, but like you, you watch something like The Raid where, again, you know, each scene motivates the next and you have a shit ton of action and it all makes sense. We're not just having action for action's sake, right? And um, that, that, that kind of becomes hard to do. Well, in this one, it's not just action one scene after another. In fact, I think there's only like three maybe four action pieces in this and i want to say half of them aren't very long and but it's effective you're you're on the edge of your seat because you know these characters far too often these days um, america well it does, doesn't matter uh, action films all across the world we almost go well aesthetically it looks good who gives a fuck about the story and you just can't do that anymore there's there's too many people out, you know maybe 20 years ago you could have gotten away with that but there's just too many um, goddamn good writers and filmmakers out there that um, you know you you gotta you gotta make an effort. This is it's, we are in a time where your uh, your 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 media or your whatever you're releasing, what be it anything really, music, art, art of any of any sort. You, you better bring your A game and, and do some extra pre pre planning. You know, and sometimes if you don't, see 400 versus one. <laughs> Um, crazy Samurai or 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 the like. Um, there's another one that I was super pumped for. That just it's a product of what happens when it's being rushed and producer step. Oh, uh, Invincible Dragon with Max Jang. Uh, Jang. Uh, holy shit! Like that. I was waiting for years for that one, and then I finally see it, and I'm just like, this, this is no good. This is no good for me. <laughs> like we. We dropped the ball and put some shit in here that didn't, that, you know. It, and I, I get it. Like, a lot of times, it, it's got to be hard for um, Asian filmmakers or filmmakers from the East um, when you're like, okay, well, I want this movie to play for people around the world. And obviously, you know, we want the West to see it because the United States, you know, puts out the biggest, best movies. Or, or, you know, who, who knows if that's true or not? But puts out the, the, the biggest movies. So we need to write or do things that will appeal to a Western audience, and sometimes that shit just falls flat on its face. I, I hate it. I, I talk to a number of people um, on the show, and um, I, I just how, – how else are, are uh, us stupid Americans going to learn unless you just give it to us straight? You know, that includes the Asian humor. That includes Asian traditions and blah, blah, blah. Um, because if you don't, I, I would prefer that it be weird in me in terms of me receiving how your culture, you know, perceives things, goes about things, whatever, how, how your culture lives. I, I would be less weirded out by that than I would something that is meant to entertain me and it's terrible. You know, like it just, it just doesn't do... Um, what, what, what the intent is, and then ultimately, everything is lost in translation. You know, the the intent, um, it just, yeah, I, I it, it sucks. <laughs> it's, it ends up sucking, and we do not have that in Hydra. I mean, dude, the first fifty seconds of this movie, a man walks into a bathroom, and. Another man follows in after him about five seconds later and stabs him to death. Blood and piss everywhere yeah, in one of the uh, the very small stalls in a Japanese rest, uh, restroom. And blood, piss everywhere. I'm just like, oh, well, blood and piss. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, baby. I'm kind of hard, too. Uh, <laughs> and after the man kills uh, the other man, which we later find, or, uh, we later find out um, was police. The man who got killed was police, but he was dirty. That's what I, I, another thing I love about this film is that um, each kill that does happen in this, it's always bad people, and it's always like a big kill in terms of importance to the story. Um, we, we don't have, nobody dies in this film that doesn't mean anything, which is great, because, I mean, when you think of action films or whatever, you know, the, the, the body count gets high, and you're like, well, I didn't even know that asshole that just came down the stairs that was trooper number three. 
Um, I, I, you know, it's just an extra body. Everyone who um, is impacted with any sort of violence in this either had it coming or we know about. And that just doesn't happen very often. And that's a testament um, to really f f uh, first, I don't want to say first time writer, but because he's got seven credits, but uh, Jiro Kaneko, uh, who wrote this film, I, I, I feel like he, he, you know, clearly a fan of um, action films. He, he cut out a lot of the fat. And we just have this fucking lean, mean, brutal, sharp film. And, you know, I, I, the, the older that I get, I, I kind of need that. Like, it, I guess, it, you know, if I go into a Scorsese pick and it's three hours and 20 longs, like, I know there's going to be some... I, I feel like... <coughs> movies too much because I don't want to ever say I can't think of the last Scorsese film that I watched and the only bring up Scorsese in terms of runtime but I can't uh, or a Christopher Nolan film I can't think of the time where I was like oh well that scene doesn't work and it needs to go but, you know, it's long that's fine as long as it's, it's well done but I, I feel like action and horror films specifically um, it can go either way it can either be really really tight or we just have a bunch of nonsense that we don't necessarily need to see is you know i love horror films but i tell people this all the time if you are just going to be violent for the sake of violent but it has no meaning behind it i don't give a fuck and horror fans fucking debate me oh but this kill in saw i don't give a, yeah i was talking to somebody the other day they're like did you see spiral and i was like no no and they were like well why not and i was like I, you know the first my my list of things to watch destroys your list of things to watch like i i Take however many things that you want to see and multiply that by about a hundred, and that's my list of things that I need to watch. But I, uh, she, the the person even at, who asked me, she's like, "Did you see Spiral yet?" Oh, aren't you going to? And I was like, "I don't, I don't know, maybe." And she was like, "Well, it, it wasn't, it wasn't all that great anyway." And I was like, "The eighth Saw, the eighth Saw film in the Saw franchise wasn't great. You don't say the eighth installment." And, you know, and she's just, like, looking at me, and it's just like, what, I, why are you looking at me like that? Like, I don't I don't have time for an hour and 30 minute, hour and 40 minute film for something that I know is going to be underwhelming. The only time I'm going to do that, like, here's the thing. I, there are several, as aforementioned, I have a giant fucking list. There are several films um, on my list that I know is going to be, oh, shit, I watched Space Jam the other <laughs> the other day i knew it was gonna be well i i knew it was going to be underwhelming but i'm also a realist i'm not like some of these hillbillies that in the town that i live in like i, I i'm a realist I, that's not for me you know though that's for a new generation of kids to like space jam and lebron and basketball and the whole nine you know i i grew up with the original space jam and you know and even back then i was like yeah i mean it's all right i did fuck i this is embarrassing but i did play the fuck out of i can uh, I believe I can fly by R. Kelly. Yeah, we don't talk about R. Kelly anymore, do we? Well, either way, I did fucking... I didn't know he was peeing on people at the time. Peeing on little girls and keeping them as uh, sex slaves. I don't know how to hog die. <laughs> That's my favorite part of that interview. You want to know when somebody knows how to hog tie? Is when they're crying and they say, I don't know how to hog tie. They probably hog tied someone. But anyway, like, I have a mountain of films that I know are going to be um, underwhelming for me. And, you know, like, I know that going into it. So um, it's just, it's it's a nature of the beast, nature of the game, you know. Um, but not so much here, I tell you. Not, not in Hydra. All the, and all oh, the fight sequences in this are my type of fight sequences. Sean! What time? What type of fight sequences would you say are your type of fight sequences? Well, very simple, realistic. I prefer hand-to-hand -hand combat over explosions. I prefer. I. It's getting to the point where I prefer a good knife fight over a gunfight. Now, there's exceptions to the rule. Could I watch a? Would are there times when I'd rather see a? Well, I want to see everything. Like this, this isn't to degrade one or the other or lessen one or the other. But um, do I sometimes want to see a John Wick gunfight? Yeah, yeah, sure. 
Um, I just happen to prefer stuff where you go, oh, that's realistic. I could do that. Like, there's a lot of um, rolling, as they say in uh, jujitsu. There's a lot of rolling in Hydra um, that I I just love it. I'm like, oh, that's fucking, he's got a wrist lock here, and he's using his uh, body momentum here. Like, it's all realistic shit. There is not one portion of this film, uh, in terms of the fight sequences, um, that that lack realism. Not not one part of it, and they're all sharp. The cinematogra- uh, cinematography by uh, Yas- uh, Yasuyuki Suzuki. That's a tough one. Yasuyuki, yeah, Yasuyuki Suzuki, um, and another one who hasn't you know been around a long time. Just like the writer, same with the director, which we'll get into here in a second. But um, the DP Yasuyuki Suzuki. Um, his cinematography throughout this entire film is on point, and it, not only just the act—I mean, the action port, uh, action portions need to be polished, but even the stuff when we're not doing a ton of action and we we may be so showing dread or worry or disdain, whatever. Yeah, Yasuyuki destroys. Well, it's ridiculous. Some of the the um, choice of lighting that he does, um, for instance, at Takashi, our main character's apartment, Takashi's apartment. Like when you mix the lighting with the score by uh, Moku, uh, it's got like, like a Blade, Blade Runner feel to it. And now that I've seen it a few times, it's very Blade Runner esque in terms of like these these are assassins that were bred in an orphanage. Um, and I, and it's like, I think, like I said, at the top of the show or at the, at the start of the show, this one's a very hard one to talk about because again, when you have a runtime of one seventeen, there's two things I could tell you that could reveal kind of the whole plot of the movie, which I don't want to do. This is definitely one. I don't want to hear any bullshit. I don't have time. Do you have time to watch seven episodes of the office that you've already seen? Okay. Well then you have time to watch an hour and 20 fucking hour and 17 minute movie. I don't want to hear it, but there's very little that I can reveal because it seems like there's a payoff every 20 minutes or so that leads to the, you're like, Oh, Oh shit. Oh, it's, it's like that. Oh, they have a connection. Like, so it, it's just, it's, it's hard to do these days in, uh, in, with a formula that works. You know, you can have the formula of guy gets the girl, guy saves the girl, girl saves the guy, you know, whatever tropes you want to. Um, but to make it fresh, to make it fresh, to make it lean, to make it work, it's not so easy to do. And uh, first-time director Kenzuke uh, Sonomira, Kenzuke Sonomira, uh, fucking, what? Your first film? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. And that just goes to the preparation that I've been harping on for years on this show. Like, I think far too often, you know, filmmakers get the deal. You know, the, the production company picks it up, gets the deal, gets the money, and then they're off to the races, and they didn't plan enough around... Uh, the finances to, to make it look good. Sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice. <laughs> sacrifice. Sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice that big name fucking actor to make one of your pivotal sequences in your film look good. Because if that pivotal sequence doesn't look good, not always is that big name actor gonna save the fucking movie. It happens all the time. Where it's just like, well, did you want to see fucking Chris Pratt? All right. Well, some of this shit fucking is gonna suffer it's like well i don't know i think i think actors and actresses given what they do like they should go the whole sports route unless you're you know a tried if you're leo or something like that do whatever the fuck you want but um i I think more often than not they they gotta take a page out of the the take a take a pay cut so that or beef up your cast take a pay cut and add another high level b actor or, or low level a actor or take a pay cut and, you know, make that action sequence look good. I guess subconsciously <laughs> what, what my words are trying to say are, 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 are getting at is the t- Tomorrow War. No, I don't have that in my notes. No, I didn't plan on talking about the Tomorrow War with Chris Pratt. But I think that maybe some of those action sequences would have looked a little bit better if Chris took two million less. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. It, it, there's no way it can't help 
um, make the movie look better. And I feel, you know, that's that's what we we did here. There is one like eye-opening action sequence in Hi uh, Hydra, and it looks really good because they didn't have it peppered throughout the entire thing. We didn't, um, and, and 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 also the scene that I'm referring to in particular, you could just on that fraction of a second alone and um, feel free to message me once you see it um, promotes a sequel yeah, it, it just it's like hey you, you want a sequel well this is why a sequel may be cool and it's the only like fantasy aspect of Hydra because like I said the rest is very rooted in reality from the um, relationships between Takashi, our, our main character, Hitman Chef, um, with Kenta, um, and one of the waiters at the restaurant that he works at, and Rena, who um, he co-operates the restaurant called Hydra um, with. Um, just a great dynamic across the board. Uh, money well spent in the, in, in the right places. Great characters from the... Um, from the protagonist to the antagonist. I mean, the fucking, the guy that comes in that, I, I, I may have derailed earlier, but I said the guy who was stabbing another and there was blood and piss all over him. Well, there's a cleaner, Harvey Keitel, Pulp Fiction style, that comes in um, after the stabbing in the bathroom to take care of the body. Some of his um, qualities, some of his little idiosyncrasies that you see along the film, they're great. They're eerie. They're fucking, they're weird. Um, for instance, he uh, we see him eat a couple of times, and it's just French toast with a lot of condensed milk. You know, just that's all I need. That's all I need to be like, oh well, he's odd. At one point, he the the cleaner is uh, uh, eating his French toast doused in condensed milk, watching his piranhas eat raw meat. You know, like it, it, that was a thirty thirty five second sequence. He didn't say a word. I know everything I need to know about that character, you know, and then it's it's all it's all on you know execution presentation. Just hey, you know what we'll have to make you look weird? We'll just have you look at piranhas eating, and it works. It works. I'm like, well, you know what? This guy probably sucks. He's probably not great at dinner parties. <laughs> um, and I gotta stop uh, laughing at my own shit. Uh, initially, when I started this show. Uh, laughing uh, filled the time like I, I would if I laugh 20 times throughout an episode well 20 times 2 seconds I'm closer to a run time of an episode that I like but I was listening to uh, <coughs> I think it was uh, Shane Gillis on the Joe Rogan pod podcast his most recent episode and he was talking about how um like, when people shit on him on the internet, you know, oh, he's a fat idiot or whatever, he's like, oh, that stuff doesn't bother me, but the stuff that bothers me is, uh, like, he, he list one co I listed one comment, and he was like, oh, this guy laughs at all his own jokes on, on, on different podcasts, and he's like, oh, fuck, do I do that? And, and for whatever reason, that stuck with me, I was like, oh, fuck, I know I do that, but sometimes purposely, I do that. Well, a lot of it, too, for me, is I want to drive home whatever point I'm talking about that it may not be as serious to me. So I, I edit some laughter like, hey, or I, I don't edit shit, but I put in some laughter so that you know, hey, it's okay to laugh, or hey, you know, I'm joking, or hey, like, you know, don't take it serious, whatever the case may be. So that's half the reason why I laugh. And then sometimes I just find some of the dumb shit that I say funny. See, like right now, I can't. I can't help it, but I am going to make an attempt, because what, for whatever, whatever reason, when Shane said that, it resonated with me. I was like, oh, fuck, I am notorious for laughing at all my dumb shit, and there's no reason to laugh at it at all, because most of the time it's not funny. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, it's, like, it's a sick thing. Even when I, I say that I shouldn't do it, and then I'm going to try not doing it, I ultimately end up doing it, because I'm garbage. Um, anyway, what else can I say about this film without, uh, giving anything away? You know, all the acting, all the acting in this is great. Um, whether it be from Rena, Kenta, Kenta actually has a very, I don't want to say moving, because if I say
a moving, uh, at least for me, a very moving scene. I would think of something like Schindler's List or Shawshank Redemption or some shit. So it's not, it's not that level of movie, uh, moving. But there's a part towards the end where, of course, Takashi has to go get the bad guys. So Takashi is played by Mazanori Mimoto. Mazanori Mimoto. He was in the 2006 Death Note, Ninja, Alien vs. Ninja, Bushido Man. I still need to see Bushido Man. The circles that I run in have been touting that one for years. Uh, Ninja Hunter, God of War, Manhunt, Red Blade, First Love. I did an episode on First Love a few months back. That's that... Uh, Takashi Miike film, fucking wild, so bizarre, you know, and I expect nothing less from Takashi Miike, nothing less than a fucking bizarre wild ride, um, Rina is played by Mew, M-I-U, Mew, uh, Hydra's her only credit, she's the girl that cooperates the, uh, restaurant slash sake bar with Takashi, uh, Kenta is one of the, uh, baby faces, uh, one of the protagonists, played by T uh, Tazuke Nagazi. Nagazi. Kenta is played by Tazuki Nagazi. He's been in quite a few things. Um, let's see. Shinichi was played by... Uh, oh, fuck. I was looking at this yesterday. I was like, you, you should practice. And then I didn't. Uh, Takaya A A Aoyagi. Takaya Aoyagi who's been in Ultraman Z, Psychic Agents, Iron Girl, Final Wars, but he plays... Um, Shinichi, um, and then Maza, the cleaner, the Harvey Keitel, uh, Maza Shugamoto. I don't know why they list last names on these fucking IMDb credits, like as far as character names. We never we never hear them called. Most of the time, we don't hear them get called by their full name. But anyway, Maza is played by Takashi Nishina, and he's great. He's so uncomfortable and, and weird and perfect, and he sa says virtually nothing. Actually, I don't now that I think about it, you know, I've seen it a few times, I should know, but I don't think he says anything throughout the entire film. Does he? Maybe during one of the phone calls? I don't remember, but I, I thought he was he was really good. Um, Yosuke, who's one of the other hitmen in training, played by Satoshi Kibe, uh, uh, who played fucking June, which is the... There's a dad in this that... Uh, gives over ah see it doesn't even it doesn't even make me feel right because if, if i were to tell you june's uh june played by yoji tanaka if i were to tell you his relationship to takashi um in the film it would ruin it <laughs> or or, or wh how they know each other it would ruin it so we, c we can't do that I, I can't have that like it's i mean an hour and 17 minutes there's only so much it i've already talked as long I, I've talked for about thirty percent of the film, right? Half hour, and no, over thirty percent. But um, yeah, I can't. I can't. I'll just say it's a multi-level thriller, and everyone that dies is has a government job, and they do bad things. They have a government job, and they do bad things, and we have cleaners and, and people to clean up such messes. You would have the police department in Japan embarrassed. Um, so we, we hire we hire people to take care of that thing for us. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, check out Hydra. Seriously, Wellgo USA release. Hydra, Hydra, Hydra. Wellgo USA release. Available now. Hydra, uh, written by... Hydra is written by Jiro Kaneko, uh, directed and edited by Kenzuke Sonomura, DP was Yasuyuki Suzuki, music by Moku, a great fucking production design, um, even though it's very limited, you know, like, it's, I think we have uh, three, four, five locations in total, um, and it's nailed, especially, like, I love the set design, cinematography and music, uh, when you see the scenes when Takashi is alone in, in his apartment, thinking about his past as an orphan, orphan turned train killer. Um, because it's a Wellgo USA release, uh, well, you know what that means. I'll be doing a giveaway. So make sure that you uh, 
look for that giveaway and I'll give you a goddamn free Blu-ray just for fucking liking, sharing the story, and tagging three friends. It costs you nothing. I don't get it. People will be like, oh, take a look at 